they got a couple, you know, seniors back. They got a couple young guys up front, and it's all going to start right there, you know, right in the middle. If we can control that, you know, it's going to open up so much more of our game plan. I think this year we're more prepared for them as than last year. And um, this year, we have just as much case speed they have on offense as they do on defense. The kids at Michigan certainly appear ready for the uh, Huskies. Mo, you've had a long time uh, since Ohio State to January 1 to prepare for uh, Washington. Is it sometimes a problem you over-prepare with that much time? Jim, I don't think there's any question about that. As a coach, you know, you find sometimes they have time on your hands and you're supposed to be practicing. You're supposed to be meeting. The more meeting you come, time that you take, you come up with more plays and then it gets confusing. And it, it's very hard from that standpoint because you're trying to do everything as a coach you possibly can do, and you always come up with a new idea every day, but you got to cancel many of those. Yeah, one of the things that you do in preparation, of course, is work with film. As a special Michigan Replay Rose Bowl preview, we're going to take you into the coach's staff room, and we're going to look at the Washington offense as seen by Michigan's defensive coordinator, Lloyd Carr. Jim, early in the Cal game with the score 0-0, zero, zero, California blitzed Washington. And the, the cornerback here is going to have this tight end man-to-man, -man, and you'll see that he gets lost and is unable to give any pursuit help. The linebackers are going to blitz, which uh, takes them out of the play, and Kaufman is going to hit an open scene here. And ending up with uh, an isolation situation with the Kaufman isolated on the safety one-on-one. -on -one. And it's this situation right here you have to avoid against great backs. Kaufman one-on-one -on -one in an open field situation like this is going to win most of the time and as you see here he's going to break it for the distance and really broke a close game open for Washington. Jim the other thing that makes Washington extremely difficult to defend is the fact that they utilize the option in situations where the defense gangs up to stop the run or to blitz to stop the pass. In this situation you see seven men here uh, lined up inside the tight end. So, so Brunel has come to the line of scrimmage, looked at the defense, and now he is going to he is automatic to an option play. He's going to come down the line of scrimmage, and uh, depending on what the first unblocked man does, he will pitch or keep the ball. The fullback is going to come out here and block the uh, deep safety. This uh, receiver is going to block the corner. The, the tailback will come out of here as a pitch man. So uh, Brunel, in this case, the unblocked defender here will come and take the quarterback. He will pitch the ball, and uh, Kaufman will run the ball down inside the 10. In Washington's passing game, the thing that makes them extremely effective is that they're very patient. They're going to take what the defense will allow them. In this case, uh, Brunel has looked out and seen three defenders lined up over three wide receivers to the uh, wide side of the field. He sees the free safety in here over the ball, and so he is red man coverage. He's simply going to drop back here and uh, hit the slot for a, uh, for a touchdown. And he, he does a tremendous job here of throwing the ball away from the defender. And because the ball is located inside the 20-yard line, there's not a lot of field behind the defender, and consequently not a lot of time for him to react to the route. Brunel sticks the ball in there. And uh, they've been extremely effective uh, throwing the ball inside the 20-yard line. So a little inside look at the Washington offense. Uh, you and Lloyd, I know, go over that a lot. The thing that I think I got from Lloyd was is that they're really concerned about Kaufman, the tailback, and his speed. Right. I think the two things, Jim, and that's number one, because if he gets loose, it's over. You know, he's like Tyrone Wheatley. He gets loose, he can hit the home run. The other thing is stopping the option play as he diagrammed it. I think Lloyd's trying to get on CBS and take John Madden's <laughs> place. I don't know. No, but uh, the option play is the other thing, other than just base football. But Washington's going to mix it up a lot on you. They're going to throw a lot of short passes, and they're going to run that option to keep us off balance. Hey, if you think that uh, Lloyd is going to try to get on CBS and take his job, you should see Cam Cameron, because we've got two sides of the ball here, offense and defense. And to take a look at the Washington defense, which, of course, is very, very tough, we go into the coach's staff room now and visit with Cam Cameron. The first thing you need to know when you, when you analyze Washington's defense is it's an eight or nine man front. And a, and a lot of defenses in college today are playing an eight and a nine man front. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you look at the picture, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine people in the center of the formation. And we as offensive coaches have got to count for all nine of these people in our running game and our passing game. The other thing that, that you'll look as you're looking at the overall picture is the 10th and the 11th people are one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Now, what are, what are the pluses and minuses of, of being an eight and nine man front? It allows the defense to outnumber you in the running game. And but what is the weakness of it? The weakness of it is that these corners, which would be Bailey on the outside, who was here last year, is one-on-one -on -one with a wide receiver, and this being maybe a Derek Alexander and an Amani Toomer. All right, let's take a look at what can happen in a play that's a nine-man front. Well, you, the first thing you're going to see is a running play, and they're going to run off tackle up the middle, and this defense is designed to stop this play, but here's what happens if these safeties don't make the play. The key people are the free safety and the strong safety have got to make this tackle because they're the people you can't block. But if you look, it's California, and Russell White breaks outside, now you've got potential for big play. The majority of the time, that play will be stopped for no gain. Not only is Washington an eight or nine man front uh, and a great pursuing defense, but where, where they cause the majority of offenses problems is they're a movement defense. And what I mean by movement defense is they like to, to move around in the interior. And, and as you look at the interior, watch the movement, how people, what we call stems or move calls from one alignment to the other. And, and what that does to most offenses is it, it makes, makes it difficult on blocking assignments for the interior people. So I think our people have really got to be sharp in this game, uh, be able to recognize movement, recognize stems, and, uh, and, and we can't blow assignments because of this movement. Now, again, looking at this picture, you've got an eight, nine-man front. This almost uh, a 10-man front where this corner here is one-on-one -on -one with the flanker. You've got to attack this defense with either maybe play action to hold these interior 8, 9, or 10, isolate the flanker, and then try to beat him one-on-one. -on -one. And you'll see here, California does a nice job of beating this corner on a post corner. Let's take a look at that one more time. The corner at the bottom is one-on-one, -on -one and what we would call inside, we're going to fake off tackle, which, you know, a little run action, freezes and the guy you have to freeze basically is the free safety everyone else is is committed to the run so you're going to hold these people hold the free safety and you'd like to allow the franker to come down make a move inside get the defensive back turned run out of it and the guy should be open i think for a team to be successful throwing the football the quarterback's got to have time as you'll see the california quarterback has time here now he's got a chance to execute the post corner. And, of course, uh, California, even though they lost to uh, Washington, uh, did play them well. And that's one of the keys that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to be able to, uh, against a pressure defense, make the right calls at the right time under some severe circumstances because they're going to be moving on you. Right. And that's the tough thing, Jim. As you know, playing offensive line, when they do all this stubbing and everybody thinks football is easy and guys have to really be sharp in there, and that's where the experience pays off. But that defense is a defense that can give up the big play, isn't it? Right, but they've been, they work hard on that, and it always looks like things are open. But the key is, which we failed to do last year, and a number of teams did against them, to protect your quarterback long enough. And yet, late in the game, we had some things open we didn't get to because of the panic, uh, realistically, on the, your quarterback, and those things happen. One of the keys to this game is your quarterback. Elvis Gerback had a poor game last year. Elvis says that's going to change this year. Don't go away. When we return, we'll talk with Elvis Gerback about the Rose Bowl when our preview continues.